Hey guys, Jay here. Uh, today I'm going to do a quick video on installing a transducer arm on my kayak. It's the Scotty transducer arm. Uh, it's pretty awesome looking. I have a Striker uh, 4 from Garmin that uh, is the ice bundle. I have an ice deucer for it now, so I'm just going to use the boat transducer that came with it as my transducer for the kayak. Uh, looks like a pretty simple setup. As you can see, it starts on the bottom with the 4 inch Scotty low pro profile track. Um, this is what the profile track looks like. And uh, I picked up another one uh, for a Scotty rod holder. Uh, the traditional Scotty rod holder that I use for my boats is, uh, I think it's the 141. You see the base, it's pretty robust looking. Um, it's got a high peak compared to a low profile track. Um, I may not use this for my rod holder. Uh, reason being is the contours of the kayak are kind of off kilter. So I can't find a really good solid flat spot on my kayak where I'm comfortable with the tracks going in. So if it's going to sit off kilter like this, it's going to put my rod holder on an angle. So I may opt to do this. I'll, I'm on the fence on that. Um, the rod holder itself, it'll be at the front of the kayak and uh, I'll be using it for a third hand basically for if I got to deal with a fish or um, changing lures or retying. So that one may be delayed. However, we're going to do the arm. Sorry, we're going to do the arm. So let's get at it. Okay, so here's the components. Uh, it's pretty easy to put together. So like I showed you, here's the four, the four inch track. And uh, the arm, you got, uh, I can't remember what the term is for these locking wheels, but uh, it goes together really quite simply. So I'm just gonna line them up. Tighten it down. So now it's adjustable. This right here also, which is kind of cool. So this is the arms half done, right? You've also got the units here that I'm going to have to put in to get this together. But if you look right here, this here, you've got a post mount. So you could either put the, a rod holder in here, um, or you could actually put in an optional piece, which is the uh, um, base mount. So you could use this to actually put a the fish finder viewfinder right here. I'm not going to do that just because the way my setup is like, I'm just going to try it sitting between my legs for now. Um, but this is an option. Um, okay. So now we got the transducer arm fasteners and, uh, I won't bore you the details. Well, you know, I'll just do it quickly. So I'll do just get the scissors, cut it up. All right. So here's the rest of it. And, um, Pretty straightforward, really. So I'll just get this together. Um, once I get the rest of the arm together, just so I have an idea of what I'm dealing with, um, I'm going to put down the um, low profile track to where I think I want it on the kayak. I'm then going to pre-drill some holes, um, which brings me to my next part. Uh, you need bits, screws, all that good stuff, but um, we'll get there. Okay, so I'm going to start to put the arm together. So just a, a quick review here. Here's like the your fastener, your the way to tighten it. So you got a hex bolt. It goes in. Uh, it's hexagon shape. Once you get it locked into the right way, it's pretty snug. Like there you go, very snug. All right, and then you got a lock, a bolt on the other side. So you take the upper part of the transducer arm, which is right here, and you can see there's a groove or a track. So the actual transducer arm that's going to go in the water, it's beveled and is only going to fit one way, which is this way inside the track. So you see how it's a nice fit, nice, it's basically like a tongue and groove, I guess. So anyway, so I've got it in. I'm now going to put the bolt through the hole, through the track. And there's my, my square nut. So what I'm going to do is just tighten it up to get it started. You don't really care where it's sitting at this point, just getting it all lined up. So now, first one is done. Now the second one. So again, same process. Hex bolt. Goes into the wing nut type fastener. Gonna put it through on the back side of the, the track of the arm. Put 
put in the other square nut, get the threads engaged. Okay, so it's it's fairly loose. Like I, I haven't tightened it. It's, it's not even really hand tight, right? But as you can see now, the track, you can adjust the length, right? So depending on how far you need it to run, you'll get a better perspective once I, I get this kind of mocked up onto the uh, kayak. So that's together. And now for the bottom part here, right here, this bottom part, this is where your transducer is actually going to go. And uh, if you look here, just to give you an idea for reference, um, you got your tabs and everything else. And this here is going to, they're on your boat transducer mount, you're going to have this piece here and it'll all screw in. So I'm just going to put the fasteners in just so I, I don't lose them. Uh, it'll be the same method, hex bolt going into the uh, plastic wing, wing nut, wing nut, get it fit it, fit it in. The difference is instead of it coming for the bottom with a square bolt, you got the, uh, the nylon locking nut instead of a square nut. So that's kind of a nice feature. The piece that goes to the transducer arm, it's uh, it's definitely, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a fastener, but it, it's, it's got teeth here, so you get a, a positive grip once you get it tightened up. So the little teeth here, I don't know if you can see them, uh, probably not. They're going to match up the little teeth that are here, and you're going to get that clicking, probably you get that clicking sound, we'll see. So uh, let's get this lined up, get the wing nut in. And uh, we'll move on to the next step, which is the part that we all hate if you own a kayak, and that's putting holes into your kayak. Nobody wants to put holes into the kayak, but you know what? It's something that's just got to be done. Okay, so I've almost got this ready to go. Onward, next step. Okay, so here's where the track is. You can see I've got it lined up. I'm using a piece of tape here just to hold it in place, so I've got a, a third hand. Um, so... The mount here, it fits in and then slides up the arm so you can adjust it to length. Uh, if you look in reference to the cockpit here, this is the front or the deck and then there's the drink holder. Keep in mind this is a Pelican Mission 100, it's the uh, Costco uh, special for 2021. So there's the cockpit, my life jacket or PFD and my napkin course. So you can see in relation to the very aft, or sorry, aft, the very front of the uh, cockpit and, and drink holder, that's where I'm going to put the mount. So I think that'll be okay for me. Um, and then as you can see, the mount's going to go in there and you adjust it. So during paddling phase, I can put it way up front. So it's definitely going to be out of the way and the arm will be up, right? And then you just adjust the arm down to be along the side of the kayak. So I think this is where I'm going to install it. So next step will be to use a drill. I'm using um, a drill bit uh, along with, uh, I have kayak rivets, but instead of using the rivets, I'm actually going to go with uh, a nut and bolt setup just because I know I'm going to get a little more strength and rigidity out of it and uh, washers. So nut, bolt, and washers. Okay, so some other things I'm going to use to, to do this is uh, I've got the track in. I'm going to uh, punch the holes with the, the drill here. And uh, you can see the bit I'm using. I think it's a 3 16 And uh, I'm using this size, which is, ooh, I wish I could remember. Mm. However, I'm using that along with uh, bolts and size 10 uh, washers. And then I'm also going to use marine goop as well just to put on the uh, bottom of the heads as I'm putting them through just so that uh, I got a little bit more insurance when it comes to uh, uh, waterproofing it. So with that said, now comes the part that we all dread as a kayak owner and that's putting holes in your kayak. But again, I'm pretty happy with the placement so I'm just going to put the holes in and get started. No more hesitation.
Okay, so I've got the first holes drilled. So what I'm going to do is just put in a couple of screws here just to hold it in place so I, I don't have it moving around on me too, too much. Um, I could end up going with the kayak rivets and put those in, but I would rather just have this really tight and secure. I don't want to lose anything out of the boat if I can help it, right? So, and kayak rivets are awesome if you can't get to the underside, believe me, but I have full access to the underside here. So, um, that's the method I'm going to use. I'm going to use these guys. Uh, they're just loosely, just so I can hold it straight, so I can remove the tape and work with a little more confidence as I punch the rest of the holes. So, uh, that's a little tip in case you're looking at doing this. Because the, the boat rocks if you don't have it tied down. This can move if you're trying to do it all by yourself. So putting in a couple of screws to keep it even all the way down makes it easier. Okay, so after some deliberation as I was doing this, uh, I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to put in the marine goop and uh, I'm just going to put it with the little wells that are here to give me just a little bit of peace of mind and then I'm going to put the screws in. But what I've done after going through this process is I've decided I'm just going to do the uh, stainless steel uh, washer uh, bolt and screw um, on the ends. Is it, it, it will be quite solid and I do have access. And then what I'm gonna do for the two center pieces or for the four center pieces, because I have so many of these, I'm gonna use the uh, um, kayak rivets. These are the, the tri-grips. So they're, they're really good rivets, um, but I just want it to make sure it's really solid. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do. A little bit of a change up. So I'm gonna work backwards. I'm gonna put some marine goop in the, in the wells here, then put in the screws and then the nuts and then I'll do the back side and then I'll, I'll finally finish off in the middle with the uh, with the uh, kayak rivets okay so that's the next step so again uh, this is just peace of mind for me I'm using uh, amazing goop and it's marine marine grade you do not have to do this I'm doing it for peace of mind if you wanted to follow suit hey welcome to the club Peace of mind can be so much when it comes to water and projects and everything else. And I'm just going to just do a dab inside it and then clean it up. And then what I'm going to do is go to the underside uh, where I have access and I'm going to secure it with the uh, washer and nut. And then when it dries, hopefully have a little bit of a waterproof fitting. I know it's probably overkill. I can see the comments now, but hey guys, you know what? Like I said, it's peace of mind for me. So. All right, 
So I'm just going to give this a quick wipe before it dries and just clean it up. All right, so I get to the underside. I'll get the uh, nuts and washer on on each one of the front screws here and then continue the process. I watched a fellow YouTuber use a magnet, by the way, when he needed a third hand. His name is Lou Ran. Look him up. He's in Saskatchewan, another proud Canadian boy. But he used a magnet when he needed a third hand when he was doing underside work like this. So I got to give him credit for that. If you're watching Lou Ran, <laughs> thumbs up, buddy. Thumbs up. Okay, so I've got the washer and the nut in. I'm just going to make sure this is doubly secure and uh, move on to the next. And that right there would be peace of mind, knowing how tight I can get this screw washer bolt set up. And uh, it's gonna take a lot to get it to come out. Rivets can fail, they're good. If you ever wanna remove them, you can. But, uh, I'm quite happy with how solid that is. All right, so now I'll do the back ones and then uh, do the rivets. It'll be easier when I do the rivets because I'll just put the goop actually straight onto the rivet and pop it in. But I don't have a lot of room to play with on the uh, the the screws, so. Just get them set. And I'll come in from the underside and put the bolt in, uh, or sorry, yeah, put the washer and nut on. I gotta be honest with you, the hardest part about this whole process is accepting the fact that you're gonna punch some holes into your kayak to achieve the greater good, but it's still an intimidating process nonetheless. So if any of you are hesitant about doing it, <laughs> I understand it. <laughs> I can relate. Okay, so time to go underside and uh, get that washer and nut combo done. And uh, we'll see how solid it is just off these four. And uh, it's 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 already feeling pretty pretty solid, pretty rigid. But um, better safe than sorry. So here goes the first set. Second set. Look, Lou, Lou ran. No magnet. <laughs> DIYer, as you would say. All right. That one was a little tougher, I'll admit it. A little tougher. But we managed to get it on. All right, so, wrench and screwdriver. And then we'll clean up the excess and move on to the rivet stage.
got a little more room on the, the inside uh, screw, that's for sure. That's how much this uh, this kayak contours. And I'm quite happy with this, this kayak. Uh, it's definitely a different experience kayaking and fishing out of a kayak. And uh, for a starter model, I'm glad I didn't break the bank on it. And I'm just going to go to the front two again, just give them one more crank, just to make sure I'm, I'm happy with how tight they are. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. If you ever watch videos, you'll see guys where they're they're doing this on their garage floor. There's a reason for it. <laughs> I, however, have put it on a table, and my reason for that is I just don't want to be scraping up the bottom of mine on the floor. I, I know you can put cardboard on it and everything else, but this is a quick project. Okay, so it's it's pretty solid here. Just want to give this one one more crank. I just kind of in an awkward position. Okay, so you take a look at this. That's solid. I, I'm very happy with that install. It was quick and easy. It took a little longer simply because I'm doing a video. But uh, you can see I, I got some goop to clean up there. That right there is the track. It's solid and um, it'll do. Okay, so I'm not sure if you can see this, but the uh, this here is the uh, kayak rivets. They're tri-grip so when your rivet gun or rivet tool pulls the rivet through the backside here expands into like three. So you get like a little tr three spots of uh, anchorage or uh, an anchor that's in three spots. And uh, these ones because they're for kayaks they also come with a rubber washer and this is the interesting part. Scotty's really got that really got it together when it comes to mounts. I know there's RAM and everything else but I'm going to zoom in just so you can see that. Do you see right here how it's countersunk? That right there is one of the washers. So here's another washer. See how nicely it fits in there and then you put your rivet in and that's supposed to give you a seal, but I'm going to go one step further and just put a little bit of silicone just on, uh, or sorry, the marine goop, uh, just on the edge right here, just so I have a little bit more. Again, it's just peace of mind. So I'm going to uh, roll it on. Might be a little more than I wanted, but. Gonna start somewhere. All right. Now I'll fit it in. 
solid. All right, now we'll get the rivet tool. These are a very cheap investment. I'm using the Aero version because I'm here in Canada. Um, and just so you know, the way to use these really, oh, I didn't realize I was so zoomed in. So this is the Aero tool. I'll show it to you in a minute. But do not snap off the rivet. Let the tool do the job. If you gotta twist and break it, you're doing it wrong. You see how it just did it on its own? That's how you do it. And then you get a little piece left over. So, again, like I was saying, this here's the rivet gun that I'm using. It's the Arrow. Picked it up at Home Depot. It was, uh, I don't want to say, 20 bucks, 19.99, something like that. And uh, it looks nice. I mean, if you can see, I'll, so I'm going to have two silver ends and then the black middle, but. Uh, I'm good with that. I said, peace of mind is everything. So I'm going to put the O-ring in. I'm just going to do like that. Put a goop on. Nice thing too, guys, if you're, if you're not experienced with using goop or silicone, you can wipe it off and if you, you still have residue left over and it dries, you can work it away. Oh, that one was a little tougher. <laughs> so same method, like I was saying. Let's see if we can get a better angle here. Don't snap it to the side. Let the tool do the job for you. If you snap it to the side to do that final break, you could ruin the integrity of the rivet. Right? So again, give it a little bit of a wipe. All right, next one. Same process. I already got the O-ring in. Grab the rivet. I'm going to put a little bit of goop on the, uh, the underside. So the easiest way to use this, like I'm doing, I think anyway, is you keep the, with this hand here, keep the force with this hand straight down. That way you're staying at the, the angle you want to be going in. Your piece comes out, the rivet is in, the anchor's created, seal's created. All right, last one, and then I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit closer just so you can see the finish. It looks a little messy just because I got some uh, roughed up silk, uh, goop on it. But that's the other thing about rivets, other than if to utilize them when you can't get to the underside. It's also, if you ever want to remove them, they're actually easy, fairly easy to remove. You just drill them out. So, not the end of the world. If you ever have to change your mind, oh, I pulled up the, the O ring. But if you ever change your mind, it is not hard. To remove a rivet. Alright, so we're in there. Grab the tool. Hmm, it feels like this one's gonna go right away. It was engaged.
Okay, so like I say, it's it's pretty roughed up because of the silicon, so I'm going to clean it up, but uh, you can see those rivets in there sound. And uh, you can see the, the screws on the end here. And uh, I'm quite happy with that. The screws look a little cleaner right now, but again, all of this silicon, once it dries up, you can work it away. It just rolls off your finger. It's not a big deal. It's basically like a waterproofing glue. So now it is solid. You, you can see. Um, I'm a stickler for letting it dry, but I'll at least show you roughly how this goes in. Uh, I'm just going to move the camera so you get a better angle. So bear with me. Okay, so for reference, you can see this is the kayak. It's the front of it. You got your, they call this uh, a Bluetooth speaker holder. Never, not when I'm out. Anyway, so um, the bottom here, you just line up to the track. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put it in the upward position. So, um, in the upward position here, and uh, line it up to the track. And uh, you just find the spot that you want to put it, tighten it down, and then here's the arm, and it comes over the side, and that's where your transducer would be. So as you're fishing, your transducer is right here, on the side of the boat rather than doing putty on the inside, these guys using duck putty and everything else. I really think this is a better option and uh, it really sort of stores up nicely. So uh, I'm gonna add better footage to this as I go along, as I get the Garmin in and everything else, but just to keep you engaged, I, f I thought I'd show you this part right here. Um, I don't know how well the lighting is. Uh, as you can see, here's the arm. Here, I'll get the drill and everything out of here. So there you go. So there's the arms. The transducer itself is going to go right here. So you raise it, and when you have it raised up, it's out of the way. I know I can still paddle with it if I had to, if I wanted to. I can also completely remove it. Or I can lower it, and uh, I have it hitting the water. Because it's adjustable, I can move this arm down or up depending on the water line and everything else. But uh, right now, I'd say it's almost perfect where I've got it. Okay, so this is the um, transducer and the cable that came with my Garmin. And uh, this is the mounting bracket for if you're putting it on a boat or whatnot. But I took it apart, so I've got just the transducer head or block. And uh, I'm just going to thread the bolt through and attach it to the bottom here and it's ready. So what I'm doing is uh, I've removed the middle spool. It looks like a spool. It's in the middle of the transducer head right here. And uh, there's a little rubber washer that comes with it just to give it a, a tighter fit. I'm going to keep that on the inside just so I get a spongy tougher grip when I'm putting it on. I'm not sure how well this is turning out. But as you can see, so I put the arm in the middle of it, putting it through, and then we're just gonna tighten it up. Okay, so just a, a heads up or a tip for any of you guys um, about to go after this and do this. Um, for the transducer I have, you can see right here in the middle, right here, that's a whole bunch of washers. And then also the rubber washer that came with my Garmin transducer. And I've also had to use some rubber O-rings and it's still not solid. So that's a little bit um, of a drawback is that the attachment piece here for the transducer mount is actually skinnier or narrower so I got about a half inch extra of play to make up for it and uh, the transducer skimmer isn't as rigid as I'd like it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a zip tie 
and I'm going to further secure it so it's rigid right here. I'm just going to zip tie the cable to the shaft arm right here. That way hopefully it's a little more solid. So as you can see I used a washer on the outside and then on the inside here I used probably about what's that four or five plus the rubber o-ring that came with it rubber washer and then on the other side a couple of rubber washers and a couple of uh, um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? I'm Sorry, I'm a little bit tired today. Spa uh, washer. So I got washers here with a couple of O-rings on the wing nut. And over here, I've got the uh, rubber O-ring and what is that? Four washers. The fifth one here, just to try to make this a little more rigid. Because if I, you bump into a rock or something for it to move, or bump into the um, you know a sandbar, and that flips up on you, you're not going to get a positive reading. So. Um, just a heads up, the aperture arm right here, you can see I've got about a half inch gap between um, the skimmer uh, mounting piece. So, heads up to you, depending on what you have, it might work on other models, but for a Garmin, this is um, a little bit of ingenuity, a little bit of MacGyver. So, here we go. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to use a security tie or a zip tie. Um, just right here, and I'm gonna just pinch the uh, transducer cable there, just so there's something else to make it a little more rigid. Just so if I hit a sandbar or something, is it? I don't know if you can see that, but it's it moves pretty easily, and I've got a whole bunch of hardware in here. So I'm gonna try to hopefully solve that issue until I can come up with a, another way or an idea because uh it's it's you know it's almost 11 o'clock i want to go in the morning so i want to fish i want to go after some trout in the morning so we'll make this the quick fix for now until i can come up with a, a better piece i'm just probably going to make something and uh go from there i just need something that binds it a little better but yeah that's a lot better already but that's not going to be my permanent solution. That'll be my for the day solution. All right. That looks pretty good. And yeah. Well. It only stops it from going one way. That's too bad. But hey, it's better than nothing. I can monitor it. It's no different than hanging it out of a hole. But uh, that's it. I'll give you a zoom out. Okay, so this is from the cockpit view. Um, you can see here, here's the transducer arm. There's the transducer skimmer. The transducer is the skimmer head. And there's the track. And I've got the cable and I've got it actually going straight into my ice fishing unit. So I'm powering it on just to give you perspective. So that'll sit between my legs um, as I'm fishing. And uh, you can see I, I've got that little screen real close to me so it's nice and easy to read. Transducer is here. Should I get underway or start moving and I'm worried about it? I'll, or if I'm done for the day and I'm coming to shore? It's uh, real easy. Just like that, and you can see it's uh, it sits fairly high. And again, I can adjust all of these to curve, angle, or bend. Uh, I can adjust the length, I can adjust how tight it is. But as you can see, it's a fairly easy setup, and it's actually pretty cool. Other than the fact that my transducer didn't fit it. But as you can see, it's sitting from the side of the boat, and uh, I can actually just undo the uh, loosen it up, and I can give it a better angle to fit the the boat. So um, I think it's pretty cool. Um, hopefully, you guys found this useful or interesting, or answered any questions in case you were curious about buying it. But as you can see, it's a uh, 
it's pretty handy. I now have a fish finder on board. Again, I'll show you another angle. Down for fishing mode, and then if I'm coming to shore, or I know I'm gonna portage at some point, or even if I know I've got a big fish in front of me, just tighten it up. So anyway, so that's really it in a nutshell. It's the uh, Scotty transducer arm uh, install. And uh, now my ice fishing electronics are now going to be a part of my kayaking as well. So okay, so I've pushed off, firing up the uh, fish finder. This here's the Garmin. I'll put down the uh, As you can see, got a nice read. All right. Not crazy, I'm already marking fish right here. It's a nice calm day, it's not too windy, so the slight breeze, I think the wind is about eight kilometers, so as you can see, it's pretty calm right now. It looks like I'm marking a fish right there on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, well, I guess I'll untangle this first. All right. So for bait, I'm just using little small pieces of worms. Uh, this little pond here is stocked with uh, Rainbow, brown trout, and tiger trout, actually. I caught my first tiger trout last year. And uh, they're not very big, The uh, some of the rainbows and the tiger trouts. And the browns appear to be the bigger and more aggressive fish in here, but uh, let's see if I can pick something up off the edge here. If need be, I'll uh, throw out the anchor, but I'm not sure I'm gonna have to right now just because uh, how calm it is. There we go, marking some little guys. Bigger guy on the bottom. Look at all the minnows right there. Well, they say you want to fish where all the, the bait is. Wow, look at them all. You hardly anything to bite with this much food available to them. So my bait is right on top of that fish. But like I say, these fish are heavily pressured and honestly, um, there's a lot of food here for them. It's an oxygenated pond. Uh, you can see the two buoys there. That's where the aerator is. And uh, like I say, this gets fished hard all year round. Plus there's so much for them to eat, so. But one can hope. I'm gonna try that point over there. I was fishing over there and I lost, uh, uh, well, you know what? Maybe I'll head over to the aerators and try the aerators for a bit. Could be bigger fish over there.
In case you're wondering what I'm going over, I'm kind of in the middle of it here, and it's uh, 13 to 14 feet, marking lots of fish. I'm going to give this bobber about another half hour, and then if not, I'm going to change to a, a deeper diving lure. But right here, I'm coming up to a, a shallow ridge. Yeah, so it's a big hump in the middle here. It's two feet deep. It's two feet deep here as I'm cruising along, so if that's something to worry about, three feet now, I can always lift the transducer. That's what's uh, really nice about it. Now we're getting some depth again. Okay guys, so not only am I impressed with the transducer arm by Scotty, but um, I'm really happy with it. As you can see in the video, I was pretty happy. Um, the electronics right between my legs where I can see uh, what I'm going over or what's going under me, it was awesome. So very happy. Um, another part or point to note out, point out is I know a lot of guys have boxes or am converted ammo boxes, but for me, I'm just using my ice bundle. So in terms of transport and cleanup and portability, I've just undone the uh, mount, slid it out, so I've got my transducer and the transducer arm and my Garmin bag with the fish finder in it. That's it. And I walk away. I'm telling you, it's pretty convenient. Very, very convenient. So, happy with that. The unit sits here between my legs and lots of room to spare. Uh, in fact, I actually have my camera bag in front of that or behind that, the fore, fore end of the, uh, the kayak. So. This was great for all day fishing. I've still undecided how I want to mount uh, my rod my rod holder. I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna twin out the track to this side. Uh, reason being is I really did use this area quite a bit for uh, changing lures, bait and, and tie and hooks um, because I was on a trout pond. So here in Manitoba, I have so many fishing options that uh, I may opt to do the four inch um, track here for another rod holder or for a rod holder. but. Again, with this, quite happy. The, uh, the setup is uh, very easy. Um, I'm actually surprised how easy it is. And uh, just the convenience of it all. I mean, to have elect electronics on your kayak, total game changer, especially when you're fishing on a busy or a really stocked area like I was. Um, I do have one thing that I'm gonna point out. Um, I said it earlier in the video. Rather than just connect everything, I'll just bring it over closer to the camera. And that is, the transducer here. My Scotty, I'm not sure I'll, if you can see this, but on my Scotty transducer, the 
unit here on the arm from the, the transducer arm from Scotty is too thin. So I got a lot of space in between. So right here I have uh, washers. So I, I've got a remedy for it. I'm going to try it out. Um, it should work. I'll show you in one second. Okay, so for any Canadians that have Canadian tires, you're going to be familiar with Plum Shop. Um, if, that's what I've ended up getting. Um, what I'm using is I had metal washers just as a quick fix because I really just wanted to get out and I didn't uh, want to run around and waste my time. So now that I've done my fishing and I've tested out the transducer arm and I, honestly I'm thrilled with it, really quite happy. I do not regret the purchase, especially for like 20 bucks. Oh, worth it. But uh, I grabbed these, these are faucet washers. They're rubber, thick. And I've got about a quarter inch of space here between the uh, transducer, or I, should I say the skimmer, and the transducer mount. So I'm going to take it apart, I'm going to pull out those little metal washers that I put in there. I'm going to put in these, which will have a, more of a grippy bind. Because I'll show you right now, this was the only drawback I had was how loose this is. So if I bumped it with the, um, you know, it's loose. So if I bumped it with a lure or something like that, it was moving it off kilter. It wasn't bad. I mean, if you've ice fished with this and just dangled it through the hole, it's not a big deal. But uh, I want something a little more rigid. That way I'm just 100% um, with the uh, transducer in the water. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so if, I'm not sure if you can see this here. I say that a lot, don't I? Sorry, guys. Okay, but right here, I've got spacers, washers, I mean, to try to take up that space. So if you can see that silver row there, that's all metal washers. So I for sure got about a quarter inch between it all to clean up. So I'm using the original rubber washer right here that came on the transducer um, boat setup with the actual Garmin. So I'm using that in conjunction with the faucet washers that I just grabbed from Plum Shop at Canadian Tire. So it should give me, like I say, more grip. And then that way I can also remove the zip tire, security tire that I put on here to try to give it some rigidity. Um, I'm hopeful this will work. I'm pretty sure it will work and let's do it. As you can see, I had a lot of washers in there, a lot of washers. So this should clean it up quite a, quite nicely. These faucet washers. So as you can see, they're a uh, nice thick hard rubber. That's what I got. It's only like two dollars for the package. You get, uh, I believe, four in it. Yep, definitely get four in it, at least for the package I bought. Okay, so here's my transducer that came with the Garmin, the skimmer. And there's the arm, if you can see the space. It's quite a bit. So I'm going to leave the rubber washer on that came with the Garmin. And uh, I'm just going to line it up. Okay, so by me putting in just that one washer on this side, it's taking up most of the play. It's considerably thicker. So what I'm going to do is I am going to pull out that piece from the Garmin that came with it, and I'm going to swap it out. So this little guy here, he's a little more supple, a little more rubbery, but I'm going to take it out and swap it with the, uh, another one of the uh, faucet washers from, that I got from Canadian Tire.
put the wing nut back on. Okay, so there it is. So as you can see, now I've got the metal washers out. I have got one, two faucet washers there. And uh, I'm wondering if, if you guys run into this problem too where there's just uh, too much head space. Um, this would be the solution if you're perplexed looking for an idea. You don't have to sit there and think you got to manufacture something or whatever. Yeah, it's definitely feeling a little tighter. So, I'll tighten this right up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so... There we go, this now is, I can't budget the way I was trying to before. I guess, that's good. So for you guys, if you have this and uh, you're looking for a solution, those washers will work. The, the faucet washers from Plum Shop, um, they really made a difference on this. And uh, now it's rigid, like it's, I can achieve that right angle with confidence and, and know it's gonna stay. And uh, honestly, this unit is an awesome addition to the kayak, especially if you've got an ice fishing gear. It's nice that you're able to use it two seasons. And uh, honestly, easy install, easy setup, easy to use. Um, like I can, I can honestly tell you, I do not regret this purchase. So, so there you go. So easy setup. So. Fish finder, you can throw it in the boat, or sorry, in the kayak. It's in there when I'm fishing. Just drop down the fish finder. There it is running under the boat. As you can see right here, it's perfect. And then even you, even honestly, I was paddling along with this down, almost like, you know, you're trolling with a, and it was great, it was awesome. But you know, you're, you're say you're coming to land, you need to beach the, the, the kayak. It's a real easy undo. Like, and it's multi-position, right? Because of the, uh, the way it bites and locks in with those spacer wheels, right? So there it is. I'm tempted to even maybe use this as a, a method for uh, my GoPro too, for uh, video and whatnot. But uh, you know, when you're done, right? So it's multi-position, you can put it upright, you can down with the boat. You're done, undo the uh, the post, pull it out, you have a fish finder unit, and it's gone. So it's one grab for setup, one grab to go. So again, the, the Scotty transducer arm is a very simple um, purchase. It's very easy to put together, um, provided you already have the, the fish finder. And I got to tell you, I'm really happy with it. So for a review, I do not regret the purchase. I definitely see multiple, multiple fish being caught simply because I have this with me. So um, hopefully I've answered any curiosities you may have about it. Uh, hopefully I've motivated you to do the same because what a great, awesome tool or addition to anybody's fishing kayak. So if you guys have any comments, please put them down below or any suggestions, put them also in the comments down below. But please like, please subscribe and thanks for watching.